obviously we've got to keep stability criterion, right? So it, so we've reached a convergence at the end. Um, and so that, that can actually get some decent results here. So this is just to kind of show you graphically what we're looking at. Um, we're modeling this interface right here with the heater pins as a one-dimensional um, heat, heat transfer between a temperature control pin, a temperature control wall, and this insulated boundary layer. Um, and so here's what our temperature would look like. So we got, we've got actual data that I can take from my um, temperature sensors that's the, from the heater pin. We've got a known constant temperature at the wall and then a second order response um, from the, uh, the insulation material. Well, it, it varies from second, first to second as you go through it. But um, anyway, so let's see here. Get a better picture of what's happening. So to create an M, we start with uh, Abrak Dewar's, uh, you know, nice Roman uppercase M. And then we got my representation, which is three pixels of, of spaciness. And uh, so we're looking at uh, our M, and then we've got some, some signals here that we're translating into uh, heater changes in temperature, and my thermal approximation of uh, what's happening in the, uh, the surfaces around it. Um, so the important thing to note here is that this is open loop control, um, and we're able to, to do it pretty well uh, because each, there aren't any consecutive points in this M. So if you look at it in this plane here, um, we never reach steady state. We're always looking at the transients, and so we can actually push the limits of the system quite a bit and not run into problems down the line. <coughs> um, so yeah, here's, a, here's another look at it. So the idea is if we exceed a threshold value, we're no longer producing shark skin. So let's, we'll give it an arbitrary value of 0.5 here. Anything above that, we're getting a nice clear letter anything below it, we're, we're getting shark skin, and that's what we want. And so there isn't really any bleed between letters um, in, in our uh, simulated uh, piece. So yeah, here's a look at our open loop control. Um, I've got a, a program I've written in, uh, in C that's uh, interfacing with a relay board, and we've got our 24 watt heater coils at each pin, as shown before. Um, so on the screen on the right side here, I can actually demonstrate what's going on. Um, can I get this going here? So I got, got DOS running. You know, we're, we're high class going over here. Uh, okay. okay, so so you see it's printing out UMAS in space font. It's going to print it out a few times here. Uh, and so we got our relays clicking away over there, nice and happy, making space music. And uh, I got some LEDs, and everything would link up to our extruder, and we get open loop, uh, open loop M's, which, uh, which look like that. And you can see it look kind of like the M in the in the simulation over there. Um, so if you can't see it, it, it looks like there's the M. You can see uh, over at Dewar's uh, M right there, nice and clean, Roman serifs and everything. Um, yeah, so that works pretty well for the, for the letters that don't have, that never have to reach steady state. But if we're talking about something like an H, then we got some problems going open loop. So this section here, we've actually, if we're pushing it real hard to get those transients, uh, we're going to exceed the limitations of our, of our uh, insulation material, and we're going to get a bleed over. So you can see the bleed over on the H over there on the, the right-hand side. Um, and that, that becomes more of a problem down the line once we get a whole you know, series of letters. So if we had a bunch of H's in a row, then the, you know, the consecutive letters would be more and more out of control because we don't have any feedback. <coughs> so we got this nice Arduino system here. Uh, so here's a closed loop control algorithm. Basically, it's the same block diagram as before with our open loop ports because I made everything modular. Uh, but we're, we're looking at three channel PI control through the Arduino, which is, which is kind of fun because uh, the Arduino works really well for this. Um, I'm only running at 40 hertz with the Arduino because we're, we're kicking back uh, serial data every 0.025 seconds. So I get, get an idea of what's really going on. And I was going to bring it in and show you, but it's kind of stuck to my exterior at the moment. Um, so yeah, here's what we got. It's a picture of my board, and there's a cutaway of the, the heater heater pins that we're working with. Um, so this is kind of my, my thermal test apparatus. Um, so I can do some, some controller tuning without being actually next to the extruder and taking up the lab space. 
So I've been driving gym nuts with the pulse width modulation on that, uh, that relays all day long. <laughs> um, so in one slide, I'm going to tell you how we do uh, iterative feedback tuning, uh, which is gradient-based controller tuning. And um, kind of the basis of it is we've got our, our control loop. I don't know if any of you or all of you have taken controls, but so here's our control loop, right? And our G is our plant, which is the, the thermal response of our heater profile. And our CR and CY are, in this case, PI controllers. Um, and our CR has moved beyond uh, our summation block because it's, we're trying to get rid of a derivative kick. And then uh, we're applying a tuning algorithm. So in this case, the point of the tuning algorithm is to find the lowest cost of a cost function. Uh, and in this case, so you can see a green line here which represents uh, the response of, I believe this is a fourth order system. And our, so the green line is what we want, the blue line is the actual response, and the cost would be the, the integral of that area between the two. Uh, and you could play games with you know, both the, the system response and the uh, control effort to get a best cost overall, depending on what you want to do. So we can apply that. I mean, we can also apply Ziegler Nichols and basic tuning laws, but this is much more fun, really. I mean, come on. We've got, we've got seemingly going. I already did system identification, so you know, we can do fun stuff. Uh, but you know, here's our H with uh, tighter thermal control. And uh, there isn't an H there, but you can see we're not getting any bleed over between the pins here. So everything is, is segregated to one side of uh, that extruded. And uh, kind of the point of this graph here is to show you that we're not exceeding kind of tolerance values that we, we set on the plastic. So we don't want to burn it, you know, for example. Uh, and we can control exactly what we want and get a really, really fast response time on that, those H heater pins. So all in all, it's a pretty good system. It works uh, reasonably well to print text. And uh, the point of the project was proven in that we can accurately control uh, the surface features of this extruded. Um, now you ask, what's the point of, of controlling the surface features of plastic extruded? Well, in our lab, uh, Professor Rothstein's primary research at the moment deals with uh, drag reduction um, in microstructures on, on surfaces. Um, and currently, the method they use to do that is a photolithography-based method, and it takes weeks, and it's a pain in the neck. So ideally, you could use something like this and tune it just right um, using my control feedback method here and produce surface features of exactly the right uh, amplitude and, and uh, wavelength, that, not wavelength, but period that you want. So it's a pretty neat little step forward in that regard. Um, so final notes to conclude here. I got some interesting little, uh, little things I learned along the way. Uh, winding those coils is a real pain because they're, they're all up to two inches long and 30 gauge wire and they're all wrapped together. So I took, uh, took a hint from your wire wrap tool which is in, uh, in the soldering room there, which some of you may or may, have, may, or may not have even used, but I uh, made my own for winding heater coils. So if you ever need wind, wind heater coils, I'm all set, I'm good to go here. Uh, step two, um, when you're doing your thermal control, it's a lot easier to do with something with a smaller thermal mass when you're tuning stuff for the first time. So I made a breakout board for the LM35s. As it turns out, um, 30 seconds after I finished my breakout boards, I decided to open a random drawer in your park room, and it turns out you've got breakout boards for SO, uh, small outline transistors. And, um, well, I learned a lot in the process, you know, it's great. <laughs> <laughs> and step three here, um, this is the effect of cell phone noise on, on my uh, temperature signal. And I couldn't figure out why on earth my, my controller would go haywire occasionally. Well, it turns out when you get a call, and the thing's unshielded, the signal noise ratio goes crazy. You know, like this is this is getting a phone call from my mom over here, and uh, and that's the temperature actually recorded by the Arduino. So be very careful when you're when you're doing your closed loop control and make sure everything's shielded. But uh, if you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them, and uh, hopefully shed some light on this complicated, convoluted project. And uh, I don't know if you got questions, I'm happy to help you out. <laughs>